Hi, my name is Miguel Birch. I am Director of Minimally Invasive Surgery uh, at Cedar sinai as well as uh, Director of the Minimally Invasive and Bariatric Surgery Fellowship at Cedar sinai uh, For our case today, we have a 64-year-old woman who presented with uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia to her primary care doctor. Uh, that uh, uh, after a extensive workup, including uh, upper endoscopies, uh, um, capsule endoscopies, et cetera, she was, uh, she was found to have Cameron's ulcers related to a large hiatal hernia. Um, again, we asked for uh, the uh, capsule endoscopy to ensure there's no uh, uh, sort of unseen lesions in the small bowel. And once that was negative, it was really felt that the only true source of her anemia was a hiatal hernia. Interestingly enough, the patient has a BMI of 32 with central obesity. Um, that really uh, we, uh, caused us to enter into a discussion with her about the potential for bariatric surgery. But uh, both given her lack of desire for bariatric surgery as well as a difficult time getting it covered at a BMI of less than 35, uh, we decided, decided to proceed with uh, hiatal hernia repair and a partial fund application. Um, as per our standard, I uh, usually get manometry on these patients. She also had manometry ahead of time, uh, which revealed a well, uh, uh, normal functioning esophagus with a DCI mean of about uh, uh, 1,200 or so. So our plan today is for uh, uh, repair of the hiatal hernia. Uh, she has about a six centimeter hiatal hernia measured by endoscopy. Uh, that does uh, uh, pretend the potential for a shortened esophagus. Uh, we're always prepared for a collis uh, length lengthening procedure of the esophagus, but I, I tend to believe with a really good, adequate mediastinal dissection, uh, we can usually get at least a, two centimeters of intradominal esophageal length. Um, but again, uh, you can't, it's hard to predict, so we will uh, be prepared to do both. This patient, 64-year-old woman who had several desmoids removed from her mid-abdomen here. She's had that operation four different times. Because of her obesity, normally we enter with the optical entry technique. However, given our history of desmoids, I feel uh, those patients do better from a Palmer's point entry uh, with a varus needle, primary insufflation, and then the optical entry. So my assistant, Melissa, will make a small incision at Palmer's point. So once that incision's been made, I like to advance um, two, three clicks, uh, sort of aiming towards the spleen. Uh, it allows for a nice oblique entry into the abdomen. So after a, a nice drop of the saline into the abdomen, we'll go ahead and begin insufflation. 